Hello and welcome to Practical Sheets. We are back in this mail merge project in the second part. In the last part we did a very very simple mail merge system where I have a list of emails and I can send an email to all of these three contacts. The thing is that this email that this mail is static. I want to make it custom. So this subject and this message I want to do it to be able to, for example, if I have here the name. I may want to do a hello John or in the subject or in the message to let, let, let's advance this so it could be really customizable and not just to send multiple emails because this is very easy as we saw in the last part. We also did this mail to current row function and that I could send just one of the emails. So this is good. But I, again, I want to be able to, if I choose one of these emails, that I send a custom email to this person. Let's just customize it uh, with with these two variables, and but knowing that we can then add more variables depending on if this is an invoice or for students or whatever it is. We can have different uh, variables: the amount, the date, etc., etc. Let's just start working with these two variables: the first name and last name. So first thing I'm going to do is have a config sheet here I'm going to have custom subject this custom subject first this let's try the one we already have and we're also going to have a custom message just so we can bring this from the from the sheets and we don't need to to change our subjects and our messages in the app script so we're going to have another sheet that is called config sheet and it's going to be ws get sheet by name and the name is config and now that we have more than one sheet i'm going to uh, change this ss uh, so it's also get sheet by name so if i want to send all the emails and i'm here in the config page it's not going to bring me an error let's call this data or contact whatever. that's it I think this works well so here my subject I'm going to change this to config sheet get range and where do I have my subject in the b1 and the messages in the b2 cell b1 and messages b2 okay so everything should stay the same Let's test this just for one of our mails. Let's do here. Let's run our current row. This Google Sheets plus mark. Let's go to our sent folder. And I have here a problem. It's bringing range. What happened is I always forget here in get range to call the get value method. Let's do it again. Now to Carol. Let's see. Now I have it. Okay. So I'm grabbing the subject line and the message from this copy. So I'm going to take it to the next level. Instead, I'm going to add variables. Here I have two variables, first name and last name. So there are a couple of ways of doing this. What I'm going to do is to have this variable. Let, let's give it a and name one way is to I am used to using this notation of two brackets and then putting the name inside so let's call this f name comma this is your first email in Google Apps Script okay so we're going to use just the first name for the subject and now that we're bringing here the subject what I can do is to replace this f name variable with my first name so i need first to bring the first name and the last name so i can bring it here it's going to be the same as the as the email get range zero but not in my third column but in the first one and the last name is going to be get range 
in my active row, but in the second column. Sorry, second column. And now I have my subject, and I'm going to use the method replace. Subject is going to be subject, but replacing. What I'm going to replace is F name variable. I'm going to in quotation marks and double bracket F name. I'm going to replace it with my first name variable. This one, and the same. I'm going to do for the last name, even though I don't have here last name, it's good to, to have it because if you decide to, to include the last name also or another variable, you already have it in your code. So let's put it here for the last name. And that's it. I'm replacing it, putting it in the, in the subject, so it should work. Let's test it. I'm going to send all the emails. Run mail merge. Let's see. So look at the at the subject lines. This is for Mark. This is for Carol. This is for Juan. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing for the messages here. I'm going to say hello, app name, and uh, space l name. How do you? Do? So it's the same, but for the message. I'm going to get my message and then I'm going to do message is equal to message replacing. We're going to replace this same thing so I can copy and paste this because it's the same. Okay, Let's save it and run again. With the changes we made, I could be I could be standing here in my config and send run the mail merge and it should run correctly. Let's see? Again, Carol Mark 1. And if you go to Carol, hello Carol Sandberg. And if you go to Mark, hello Mark Thompson. And if I go to Juan, hello Juan Guzman. Okay, so this works well. This message is, is good, but it's um, what if I want to include an image or a link? Putting it here, it's going to be make it difficult. So for very simple messages, this works well. But for a bit more advanced messages, I'm going to use HTML messaging. So, you need to look in Google for an HTML online editor, the one you prefer. Here. So, I'm going to create a new message. The, the thing with HTML messages is that I can include images, buttons, tables, links, in whatever I want. So, it's more flexible than just these very simple messages. It's good to leave them the simple messages because there are the possible for accessibility reasons there is the possibility that someone doesn't have access to html reader it's very low in this day and age but it could happen so it's a good practice to always leave a simple message but we're going to move it one step further and not only have the simple message but also have a more advanced html message so let's put it hello again in my in the variables, name, last name. I hope you're doing good. Let's put some wrinkly faces. Thank you for purchasing my curse. Please visit my YouTube channel. And I can have here a URL and you could include a link to my YouTube channel and if I want I could include images and tables for now let's include for example a line and then I could have here and sincerely Sebastian and I could put Sebastian in bold and in a color and also the name I want to put it bold and with a color also this may not look very good but it's just the the idea is that you can have much more advanced emails than just a message. So what we're going to do is to copy this HTML that has... So the, the, the thing about HTML editors like this one is that I write it down and do it very visually and very easily and then it's going to generate the HTML code that I'm going to need for my message. 
So I go here, I'm going to create in, in Google Apps Script, you can create not only code, but you can create also HTML files. I'm going to create a file and call it message. And paste our code. I haven't put a name to this project, so I'm going to name it. And what I'm going to do is to, as I have a subject and I have a message, I'm going to have also a HTML message. But this I'm going to call it in a different way from what we have already done. Let's call this HTML message. And for this, I'm not going to connect with Google Sheets, but with my HTML. I'm going to do this with, with the HTML service and with this option, create HTML output from file. And the file is this one, message. So in quotation, I can put message, and then I'm going to bring the content with this get content method. So it brings it as a text, the HTML as a text. And then this HTML message, I'm going to do the same I have done for the subject and for the message. Replace the first name and the last. And as you can see in my send email, I have an email, subject, and message, but I don't have the HTML message. For this, I need something that is called the options. So I'm going to put a comma and put a bracket. And in this bracket, I can have some options. Look at the, at the help. Here I can have attachments, I can have name, and have a lot more advanced things that I can include in my email. No reply, if I want to change the from the sender's email, and a couple of other things. So right now I only need this HTML body option and I'm going to include my HTML message with a column. And that's it. Let's save it and test it to see if it works. Send all the emails. Let's see. Okay, so I have here my emails, but I have an error because I am sending the HTML, but I'm, I was not able to change the first name and last name. Let's see why. Ah, because I forgot to uh, assign it to the HTML message, as I did here and as I did here. So I forgot to do HTML message equals to the replace. Let's save it again. Run it. And let's see. So here, look. Hello, Carl Sandberg. Hello, Mark Thompson. One thing, one very small note that you may encounter a problem is that, let's say here in my message, I repeat one of these variables. I put, for example, here, let's put a p tag. And let's say, thanks again. And let's put the first name again. Okay, let's close the tag, save it, and let's run it again, just for one, for this one. Let's look at it, and here you can see that it changes here, but it doesn't change here. For whatever reason, replace only replaces the first one it finds. So if you have the situation where you repeat the name again, then maybe there's a better solution, but the, the, the one I do, because normally you don't put that many variables, but if it is repeated, then you uh, put the replace again. Let's, put, let's double the replace for first name, save it, and run. So now it's working. Okay, so be careful with that. I'm going to do two things to before I leave, the first one is to tell you that here, as as in the as in the custom menu, as, as in the default menus, you can have icons. So in send email, I can have some icons here. So I can go to my unopen function, and here I could add a, any emoji I want. So let, let's look for a for a send email emoji. So I could put here the send email, and for the run mail merge, I could put this man running, no, no, what, whatever you want, but just to know that you can do it. Let's run or unopen, just to see it in action. And here you have it. Okay, so I want to clean this up a bit. Um, 
I'm going to leave the send email function in another file. Let's call this main functions. No, let's say functions. Just to have the, 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 the more difficult or more complete functions. The send email at the row, for example. I could put it here in my functions. And also this on open. I could also leave it there. And then I can have here my, let's say my main functions or the ones that, that appear here. Run mail merge and send email to current row. There are these two. So I could call this main or whatever name you want. Main. Let's save it. And then we have one last thing I want to do before I leave is to have a record of a, a register of the emails that I send. So I want to have here a email sent or status. And here I can have date, date sent date last sent. So once we send the email, I want to put here that this email was sent and the date it was sent. So I'm going to do it here in my send email function. So once I send the email, I'm going to include this. Th there is a possibility that I don't send the email because the, the mail is wrong, because the, the quota has been reached, because uh, my connect internet connection is wrong, whatever. So I could enclose this in a try function. And then the try function always goes with a finally or with a catch function if I need the errors or if I need to know if it was able to do it. So this is just a, a ensuring method just to know that it was able to send the email. Yes. So if it was able to send the email, then here in the finally I'm going to Put the status send. So in my active row, I'm going to go to my SS, my spreadsheet, and get range in my active row. And this is the column or I'm going to set the value to send. And then in the next row, sorry, in the next column, in the, in the same row, but in the next column. I'm going to set the value to the current date. And this I can do it with the method new date. That's it. I'm going to save it. And let's run it. So this is a, a way of... This has two purposes. The first one, to know when I send the last emails and if these emails were sent. And the next one is in the next part of this series we can condition the, the the next send so that when I'm going to run it again, if this is sent, for example, then I'm not going to send to so I don't accidentally send a, a, the same person two, three, ten, twenty emails each day. So this this may may prove helpful for that. Okay, so that's it. We are advancing. There are a lot of other things we can do, but. I think this is advancing smoothly. Thank you so much. And you'll find um, the template in my Patreon page. And please just comment with any questions or suggestions you may have. See you the next time. Thank you so much.